My name is Dawn Clemens, and I am principal of Stuart Hobson Middle School. My history with the school is I arrived here in 2011, so I have been here for five years. Prior to that, I spent 28 years in education. This is my 34th year. Um, I have worked in private schools. I have worked in public schools. I have worked in charter schools. I've worked in a parochial school, and I've actually worked overseas for seven years. The vision for my school and students is to send every single child off to high school being responsible, independently responsible is how we say it here. We want them to be able to self-regulate, and we would like them to be able to understand where they are academically, where they want to go, and how they're going to get there. Yes, um, both in the DC cast a few years ago, both reading and math, we were above 55%. I believe I am personally responsible for the academic growth of every student in this school. There's times when you take off your administrator and your educator hat, and you put on your parent hat, and I, uh, approach what I do at this school the way I would for my very own children. So yes, we have academic expectations for every child, and I believe I'm personally responsible. The academic expectations of my students are that they will arrive to school on time, they will be here every day because you cannot get my medicine unless you're here every day, I expect them to come to class prepared, and I expect them to use their perseverance and grit to attack everything they do during the day. I believe that hard work um, produces academic um, achievement, and I believe that because we know that with the neuroplasticity of the brain, that IQ is not set as we once believed back in the 50s. So we attack uh, our, our work very carefully here with a lot of perseverance, a lot of grit, and a lot of hard work. We keep track of our students' academics in a number of ways. We use iReady Math and that is a online program where our kids every single week um, are tested it, with small quizzes so we can keep track of where they are and where they're going. We have SRI is our scholastic reading inventory is our big assessment that we use throughout the year as far as reading goes. So our kids constant four times a year have an assessment in reading so that we know where they are and then we can do reteach plans based on that. We also have a lot of fun at Stuart Hobson and we assess where our kids are with what we call our ABCs. A is for academics, B is for behavior, and C is for coursework. And every week, the sixth versus the seventh versus the eighth grade, each of the houses compete against each other in all three of those categories. So kids know where they are as a grade level as far as their behavior compared to the seventh or the eighth graders or as far as their coursework. We switch the coursework up every month. One month it may be how many books they read, another month it may be they are I ready scores and doing their homework every night. We'd use a number of different things and the kids love it and they always know where they're at. So we attract we also um, track our socio-emotional, the behavior of our kids under B for behavior. Uh, we have a discipline tracker and the kids all know um, if they've been suspended or if they were late or whatever they need to work on. So the kids actually love that and they hold each other accountable. Behaviorally, we expect our kids to come to school on time, to be in uniform, to show up to class ready to work, and we talk to kids very much about, we have both restorative justice here as well as peer mediation. So adults do help kids work things out, but we also have step two, which is 
kids helping kids so that when they leave Stuart Hobson, they know how to work out their own problems. That's the ultimate goal when you're talking behavior. We spend a lot of time talking things out. We talk about that as long as we're talking, you're, you're fine. As soon as you step over that line and you touch another child, then we, we have other serious consequences. We enforce rules at Stuart Hobson also in a number of ways. The, the basic rules of being to class on time are enforced because we will run a once a week without child and student knowledge. We'll run a sweep of the floors. So everybody that's late gets in Miss Clemens' arms here, and I have you over here, and you have to call your parents and let them know that you were late to class. So little things like that. We do have... Um, a lot of time that we spend in restorative justice and peer mediation with our kids. We have what we call an AIA room, alternative instructional arrangement room. That is another way we hold kids accountable. So if they're disrupting a class, we don't stop the whole class. They are just escorted down to the AIA room and they can finish their work there. No one's in trouble. It's not about being in trouble. It is about not interrupting the class. And this is your consequence. You're gonna do the work. Doing the work is more of a consequence than being in trouble and sitting somewhere quietly, right? So we have them do the work that they're missing when they're causing a problem. We reward good behavior in a number of different ways. Kids that come to school on time, every month we have some kind of a reward. If you're here on time 100% of the time and you are here, uh, written excuses don't count. You have to be in your seat. We have so far this year had for September, we had a, a musician, um, magician. For October, we had a pancake breakfast for everybody. For November, we had a yo-yo assembly and learned how to use yo-yos. So we were very good for attendance, our kids all understand. Um, when we have growth in SRI or growth in iReady, all the academic things that we do here at Stewart, every child has a locker and they receive die cutouts on their locker for perfect attendance or for iReady growth or for SRI growth. So it's sort of their trophy case. Their locker is their trophy case and everybody has stickers on it. So um, academics that way. We also are two blocks from Union Station. And when our kids do very well, the teachers can take them two blocks and they can have lunch like a year, like a big kid off campus. So the kids love that. Um, we reward good behavior, oftentimes individually with kids based on contracts we have with them because everybody has a different road to getting where they are independently responsible. Yes and no. I believe that it is both of our responsibilities. And I believe that because we all read Drive by Daniel Pink, and we understand that intrinsic motivation is really what happens in a work environment. You don't have to have top-down management. So my teachers choose, and I facilitate. They go to, oftentimes they'll have themselves videoed, and they can send that into DCPS to some of the master educators who will give them feedback. They also have my blessing to go to other schools as well as other teachers in our school to observe and get professional development that way. They can also watch videos online that are put out by DCPS that tell them in different areas such as classroom management, um, good tips that they, all, they choose to do oftentimes. Um, we also read. This faculty reads a book every quarter, I mean every semester, so we read two a year. We've read books on grading. We've read um, Background Knowledge by Marzana. We've read Reading Reasons by Kelly Gallagher. We've read Read Aside. So we keep up with our, our profession through reading. Um, we also, every single morning, have what we call CMT, collaborative meeting time. And during that time, they receive professional development from their peers, as well as our instructional coaches on close reads on Wednesday, Hockman on Thursday, developmental designs on Friday, uh, pleasure reading and blended learning on Monday and Tuesday. So we have our targets, our focus for the year. They do that on the mornings every day before the children get here between 8 and 8.45. We also have two other avenues. We have 
individual learning communities where they personally have something that they want to work on for their career and our ICs or instructional coaches will help them with that. That is 45 minutes a week. Um, and then we have what we call collaborative learning communities, sort of like a master's program where six or seven people are around a table and they are working on one of our major focuses. When we have a teacher vacancy at Stuart Hopson, I have a number of options, but the thing that I love to go to first is a personal relationship with teachers in the area that we know are great teachers and our teachers go out and help me find uh, colleagues that they know are fantastic to interview. Um, because I've got good teachers here and they have good teacher colleague friends. So uh, personal relationships are very important. Um, we also use DCPS. Um, DCPS has an entire online program that we can use where the teachers have been vetted and we see them in a practice lesson. We get their resumes. We have any um, uh, impact reports if they come from DCPS. So we very carefully vet them um, using what DCPS gives to us. DCPS also has special uh, teachers that are have fellowships and I always try to get my <laughs> to get in there first uh, in February and early March to see if I can get one of the fellow teachers that that have been vetted as as highly effective teachers. Um, and last but not least, uh, word of mouth um, in the, in, with, through our PTA because they want good teachers for their children. And when they have contacts, they always send those to us. We evaluate teachers and hold them accountable for student growth in three ways. Number one, very formally, we have impact. That is five times a year two times a year with me, with a master educator, and three times a year with an administrator. That's very formal. We have informal observations that we do probably every two weeks or so where we go in with a targeted reason, whether it's our writing program, whether it is our um, uh, developmental designs, whatever our focus is. And the third way we observe and, and hold teachers accountable is through informal observations where I will go in with the instructional coach or I'll go in with a lead teacher and we'll talk and have a conversation. Another way that we do that is um, not as observation, it is paper, um, it's on paper, is that we have what we call a CSC, that is your contribution to school and community. And there are five areas there. And we look how a teacher works with the family engagement. We, we look at how a teacher works with our special ed students. We look at their high expectations for the year. We look at how they work and what contributions they have to our school focus. Um, and then we have um, professionalism. That is a conversation, a sit-down conversation three times a year with a teacher um, so that we can keep track of how we're, we all believe um, we're working with children in that respect. As far as the growth of kids, we work through online programs three times a year with their scholastic reading inventory. So we sit down with a teacher and see how their children are doing growth-wise on that assessment. We do the same thing for iReadyMath. We engage the parents of our children through a lot of whole group, which is our back to school night. We have a curriculum night right prior to back to school night because we, we make sure that back to school night is pretty much meeting each of the teachers and getting to know your teacher and getting a syllabus. However, curriculum night is all the major focus that we, the different foci that we have here. So we take the time to go through and explain our developmental designs program, which is our socio-emotional learning program. We take time to explain all of the enrichment we have after school and those kinds of things. So anything that is academic goes through curriculum night. We have parent-teacher conferences four times a year. Um, where parents can come in from 11 in the morning till 7 at night and we talk to them individually as well as in groups because oftentimes our grade levels will meet them. All of our teachers have open lunches and um, planning time and they on their own as a group 
if they're having an issue with a child and a, ch a child is having problems that they all want to be a team and and um, work with in a team fashion, they call parents in and they give up their lunches and they give up their planning oftentimes to deal with children. Um, so we communicate that way. Obviously, we have Yahoo listserv, we have Facebook, we have InGrade. InGrade is the program here at school where we give them the grades of their children so parents can get on InGrade as can their kids. We can send out emails um, via InGrade also. I do a robo every Sunday in addition to other days during the year, um, during the week, to tell parents what's coming up and what's going on. Um, and last but not least, we have a PTA newsletter that goes out every month, so we do our communicating that way also. We believe in an open door policy here, so literally uh, my every, te every teacher, every parent, every child has my, my cell phone number and I get a lot of telephone calls, as do teachers and, and administrators. It's, it's out there. I am available to talk to parents with an open door pretty much all day, every day. I am here at 7 in the morning, and I seldom leave before 6 or 7 at night most of the time. Um, uh, I, you can call. You may email. You can ingrade me. You can Facebook me. Uh, any manner um, that the PTA puts out also.